All right, now that you've got your site created, it's time to add some content. If I'm on my page and I click twice, I get this nice little um, circle that will help me add things. So I can add text this way, and I would just type. I can change the style of text right here, the alignment. I can link that out to something else. And what's really nice is over here in the section background, I can change the emphasis. These bands come in very handy if you've got a lot going on on a page and you want to separate out categories. So again, I can click here and add anything from Google Drive, add images. Images are nice because you can drag them from your desktop and drop them right in here. Or I can come over to the insert button. We'll look at layouts a little later. That's a newer, newer feature. But here are some things that I can add to my site. I can put a YouTube video in here to play live. So if you're doing any sort of flipping the classroom, this is one helpful tool. And basically anything from Google Drive can go in here. So anything you can link to on the internet or put in your Google Drive can show up here. If you have documents, that you have created in Google Drive, it's really simple to move them over to your website, but there is something you need to take a look at first. By default, everything that I create in my Google Drive belongs to me. It's not shared out. It's private. If I want something to go on my website, I have to specifically say that's okay. You wouldn't want your Google Drive viewable to the world anyway. So I'm going to find a document that I feel is okay, I want this on my website. Now this one you can tell is shared already, but what I would do is select my document, come on up to the share button, and I need to come to advanced. By default, this will say it's off, shared only to specific people that I would designate. What I need to say, it's okay on public on the web, and save it. So for anything to make it from my Google Drive, into my website and to be viewable, I need to change the permission first. So again, that was selecting whatever document I want on there, coming to the person plus, advanced, and I'm looking at who has access, and I want to make sure it says public on the web. If you don't do this, what's going to happen is students will be able to get to your website, and then they will see where the Google Slides are, and it will say you need to ask for permission. It's one extra step. But once you do it a few times, it's not so bad. So let's move some things over from Google Drive. So I want to insert from my Google Drive. And I'm going to come over to my Recents. This is one slide presentation that I know I changed the permission on, so it's public on the web. I'm going to click it twice and it goes in. I can rearrange this. I can make it larger. I can move it around on the page. I can do this and then double click and add text next to it. Got lots of options there. To add images to my site, I can come over here to insert images and either select something that's already on my Google Drive or upload something. I find it's just as easy to take something from my desktop and drag it in. I can resize this, but notice it kind of cuts off part of the image. I can come up here and uncrop it. I can move that image around. And I can make that image link to something else. So especially on sites um, with younger kiddos, you might have an image that links out and you would paste in the website that you want it to link to right here. I can put YouTube videos in here by clicking here. If I know the address of the YouTube video, I can put it in here. Or I can just search for what I'm looking for. And when I find what I like, I can say select. And again, I can resize this just like I can images. And I can put it anywhere I want to on the page. There are lots more things you can add. But let's take a look at what if you created something in Microsoft Word and you wanted to put it on this site. 
Remember that everything that goes in this site must live in Google Drive first. So what I would do is come into my Google Drive and I need to get the Word document in here. So I'm going to go to New and I'm going to File Upload and I'm going to find a Word document that I thought I had on my desktop. So you'll see it's uploading. I'm going to go to it and I'm going to tell it to open with Google Docs. Then the next step is to make sure that it's shared. So again, I'm going to share and go to advanced and change from private to public on the web. then I'm ready to put this in my Google site. That might seem like an extra step, and it is. It's one reason why I tend to stay right within Google Drive to create my stuff, just because it's easier for me to move it over to a Google site. And again, remember none of this goes live until I hit the Publish button, so it saves automatically. If I want to see what this looks like, I can click on Preview. And down here, this is what it looks like on a larger screen, on a tablet and on a phone. And let's say my site is created and I want to share it with parents. How do I get the link to this site? Well, I can come here to Publish Options and I can view the published site. This is the web address. Yep, it's long. So what I'm going to do is, rather than give that out, I'm going to go to the site Tiny URL Dot com and I want to make a custom one so I'm going to put in that paste in that long address and maybe I want this to say Mrs. Sheldon site or test website in this case and hit return. Sometimes you'll find that that one's already taken so you have to try again. The other option is I can just paste in and say make the tiny URL and it creates one for me right here. The only tough part with this is it is case sensitive. So instead of giving out the big long address, I now have a shortened address that I can give to the families. So that's just a little bit on Google Sites. Please don't reach out. Hesit <laughs> Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions.